Hi, it's Steve from Parts Select. Today we're going to show you how to install a dryer repair kit on your dryer, and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a quarter inch nut driver, a long flat blade screwdriver, a short flat blade screwdriver, and a Phillips screwdriver. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, since we will be working near some electrical circuits, we'll have to disconnect the power to the dryer, so simply pull it forward and unplug the dryer. And if it's a hardwired dryer, we need to locate the fuse panel or breaker panel and turn the power off at that point. Well, next we want to pull the dryer far enough forward that we can gain access to the back of it, so you'll need to disconnect it from the vent. Now, on conventional dryers that have a console on the back, you will need to remove the end caps and the screws that secure the console to the top and tilt it back to remove the top. On this style of dryer, we simply will need to remove two screws at the back of the main top and pull it back to gain access. There are two quarter inch hex head screws that secure the top on this model. Just remove those, slide the top panel back, and then lift it free. Now in this model, we'll need to remove the control panel from the front, and it has a couple of plastic clips inside that you'll be able to see that will need to be disengaged. So simply push them sideways to disengage them and tilt the console forward. And you may need the long blade screwdriver to access those tabs. Then there'll be three tabs across the top that we'll need to lift up on the console to disengage those. And we can tilt it forward and lift it up and out of the way. Now that will give us access to two quarter inch hex head screws that secure the front panel in place. And we'll also need to remove two screws in each bottom corner that secure the lower access panel. So we'll remove those first. And then just pull away on the bottom edge of that access panel and tilt it forward and let it drop down to unhook it from the bottom of the front panel. And we can set that aside. Now next there are two quarter inch hex head screws in the bottom of that front panel. We can remove those. Now before we remove the front panel, we'll want to disconnect the harness that goes to the door switch. So locate that below the front panel and just slide a flat blade screwdriver in under that locking tab to separate that. And there are tabs on both sides of that connector. And unplug the harness. Now in these round door models, there are also two Phillips screws on either side of the lint screen opening that will need to be removed. And then the last step is to remove the two quarter inch hex head screws at the top of that front panel. And just keep some weight against that panel to hold it against the cabinet as you remove those screws. And then lift up on the whole assembly, tilt it forward, and remove it. Now our next step will be to remove the front bulkhead and on models that have an electronic sensor dry, you'll need to disconnect the wire harness to that. So again, with a flat blade screwdriver, just go in under those locking tabs on the connector and just spread them enough that will allow it to disconnect. And then we'll remove the two quarter inch hex head screws on the bottom. And we're also going to remove two screws on that blower housing located here and here. Now these screws are typically a gold color screw to indicate which ones that need to be removed. And then lastly, we can just loosen these two top screws. You'll note that there is a keyhole slot that fits down over those screws, so we don't need to completely remove them. And that will support that front bulkhead until we remove it. So just carefully pull it on the bottom of that blower housing. Lift up gently, clear the bottom lip of the bottom of the cabinet. Once we've cleared that, we can lift up on the bulkhead, disengage it from those keyhole slots, and then tuck it down from behind the top panel. We can now set that aside. Now next, we'll want to remove the control panel completely from the dryer. So you'll note that there is a harness on this model that comes from the control panel back to the control board on the side here. So we just take our flat blade screwdriver and just release that locking tab with just enough pressure to clear the harness connector. Pull that through and then set this aside. Now we will need to remove the drum as well. So we're going to remove this bracket from the front to allow us enough room to lift that up 
and pull the drum forward. We'll also need to disconnect the belt from the drum. So reaching in over top of the blower outlet, and reach back until we find that belt and you'll feel where it goes around an idler pulley. So we'll need to pull that idler pulley enough to release the tension, so pull it towards the left, roll the belt off of the idler, and that will give enough slack in that belt to be able to lift the drum up and away. So we move screws that secure that support from the cabinet. On this model there'll be one on the top and the side. And you may have enough flexibility by just removing one side, but I find that you need to at least loosen the one on the front on the opposite side. And that should give you enough flexibility to pull that drum out from underneath of it. Slide the belt back off of the drum as you pull it forward. And then set that aside. Now with the drum out, we can replace the screws on that top support to hold the cabinet rigid. Now with the drum removed, we can next pull the old belt out of the cabinet and discard it. Now the four drum rollers all are mounted in the same manner. There's a triangular plastic clip that will hold the roller from coming too far forward or too far backward. So with a small flat blade screwdriver, we'll just go in under the edge of that clip, spread it just enough that we can pop it off of there. And just discard the old triangular clips as we do have new ones with the kit. Slide the old roller off. Remove the rear clip as well. And then just slide them completely off the shaft. And discard them. Now when installing the new clip, we're simply going to push it past the front groove where the front clip will sit into. You may need to use the flat blade again to lift it up out of that groove and push it completely to the rear and make sure it sets into the groove at the rear of that shaft. Just apply enough pressure on that clip so that it will lift out of that groove, but not enough to stretch it too much. Try to hold one edge of that up onto the flat of the shaft as you pry the rest of it out. And rotate it around so you can get the last end of that triangle clip. and slide it completely off and discard it. Slide the new one up past the first groove. And if need be, just gently spread it enough to pop it up out of there.
and then make sure it snaps into the groove at the back of the shaft. Apply a little bit of oil to that shaft if it's dry. Slide the new roller on. And then snap on the front triangle. Now once we have all four drum rollers installed, we can next change the idler pulley. And again, it is held on with the same type of triangular clip. So with our flat blade, we're just gonna reach in and pry that off and discard it. Slide the old idler wheel off. And there will also be a thrust washer on that shaft that will need to be removed. We'll install the new washer, new idler pulley. Make sure it turns freely on that shaft. And if need be, just apply a few drops of oil for lubrication. And then secure it with a triangular ring. There will also be a thrust washer on that shaft that will need to be removed. We'll install the new washer, new idler pulley. Make sure it turns freely on that shaft. And if need be, just apply a few drops of oil for lubrication. And then secure it with a triangular ring. We're now ready to reinstall the drum into the dryer. And if the belt was broken on your old dryer, you may not know how the new belt will install. Now when reinstalling the belt, we need to know how it will fit around the hider and the motor pulley. It will basically look like this. And that will allow the groove side of that belt to lay up against the drum and provide spring tension to keep it tight. Now when installing it, we're just going to drape it over the drum, lift the drum into position, and then we'll install the belt onto the idler pulley and motor pulley once we have it in place. And now we can reassemble the dryer. Now when reassembling, we'll first of all take the screw out that holds that cross member in place. That will allow us to lift that up enough to fit the drum in place. just leave it a little bit forward so that we can drape the belt around the drum, leaving it free from the back side. Now we can push it back the rest of the way. We'll want to make sure that those rollers fit up into the groove inside the drum. And make sure that the felt fits nicely around that back bulkhead. Now at this point, we're going to reinstall the belt around the motor and idler pulleys. Now to install that belt, we're going to reach one hand in from the right hand side over top of the outlet duct assembly and the other hand we can reach in from the left side of the cabinet and we're going to take that belt lay it across the top of the idler pulley with the groove side up and then from the right side we're going to push it in underneath that idler pulley forming a loop and as we push the idler pulley to the left, we can take that loop and wrap it around the motor pulley. And just feel that belt, make sure that it's right side against the drum. And then carefully rotate the drum clockwise for a few turns. And you should see the blower wheel turning like that. You should see groove side of the belt against the drum and it should center up just about an inch forward into that hollow spot on the drum. Now we can reinstall the screw that 
holds that cross member in place, as well as the screw on the top that we removed. Now next we'll put the front bulkhead in place. Now when installing the front bulkhead on the round door style of dryer, we need to make sure that we get the bottom portion of that blower housing cover in over the lip of that cabinet. Now there is a bit of a cut out there, so we're going to tuck the top of it in first, in behind that cross member. We're going to lift it up high enough that we can clear that opening. And then lift up on the drum to make sure it sits down on top of the rollers. And then you can rotate it into position, make sure the keyhole slots line up with those screws. And then we can go ahead and install the two bottom screws and tighten the two top ones. And replace the two screws that secure that cover to the blower housing. And if your model has sensors in the drum, we'll need to reconnect that wire harness. Make sure it's inserted enough that the locking tabs on both sides engage. And if you removed the screw on the left side of that cross member, remember to reinstall that. Now when reinstalling the front panel, we'll want to make sure that we have a couple of screws handy here. And then we're just going to lay it in position. We'll line up the screw holes at the top, hold it in position. And once we have the two top screws there to support it, we can make sure it's lined up, if it's flush with the cabinet. And then install the two bottom screws. And then tighten all four of those securely. Remember to reconnect the door switch harness and insert the plug in full enough that the locking tabs engage. We can next reinstall the control panel. Begin by inserting the harness through that opening and then we're going to engage this large tab in the center with the rectangular opening on that cross member. And then also engage the two tabs on either side and the three across the top. Make sure those tabs spring back towards the center of the console so that they're locked in position. Also reconnect the cable connector to the control board on the left side at the top here. And insert it fully so that the little locking tab hooks on the bottom and holds it in place. Then open the door and replace those two Phillips screws that secure the front panel to the bulkhead. We'll reinstall the bottom panel. We'll make sure that this top lip on the panel tucks up in underneath the front panel. And hold that in position while you install the quarter inch screws. And if need be, you may have to tilt that dryer back enough to get good access to those two screws on the bottom of the front panel. Tighten them securely. And now we can put the main top back on. Now when reinstalling the main top on these round door models, you note there are a couple of tabs and they will fit into that slot just where the cabinet is recessed back a little bit behind the cross member. So lay it into position, make sure it's down nice and flush, push it forward and ensure that it engages those tabs. And then install the two quarter inch screws that hold it in position. We're now ready to reconnect the vent and our repair is complete. I told you it was an easy job. Thanks for watching and good luck with your repair.